In geometry, there are a few very essential constants, such as the pi, the square root of 2, and phi, or the golden ratio, which we will talk a lot about in this video. An additional important geometrical ratio is that which resolves the problem of squaring the circle. When you look at any study about the geometry of the Great Pyramid of Giza, you will find people talking about this constant encoded in its structure. In this video, we will look at some ways how these values can be found in the pyramid design. And we will find a lot of other interesting things, like the importance of number 7 in its construction. Pi defines the ratio between the diameter and the circumference of a circle. The golden ratio is something frequently found in nature, including the geometry of the human body. It can be found by an interesting simple procedure. Take two numbers and add the second number to the first. Then add the sum to the second number and keep repeating this. The ratio of two consecutive numbers will approach the golden ratio and eventually give a very precise value. The sequence that you get when you start with 1 and 1 is generally known as the Fibonacci series. However, this works with any two numbers to start with. Mathematically, the golden ratio can be defined as 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2. Another important geometrical ratio is the square root of 2, because it defines the diagonal of a square. All these values are somewhat difficult to define accurately without a calculator. They are irrational numbers, which means that they have an infinite number of digits after the integral part. The geometry of the Great Pyramid provides means of finding these crucial ratios as a result of some rather simple geometrical principles. But although it might be quite simple to construct a shape based on these principles in a small scale, it is an amazing achievement to encode these values precisely into a huge structure like the Giza Pyramid. When we start looking at the measurements of the pyramid, it's important first to know that the Egyptians did not use meters or feet or inches, but instead they had a basic unit of length called the royal cubit. There are some variations to the actual length of this unit, but the pyramid itself, in my opinion, defines it. And the key to find this is the king's chamber, which is located in the middle of the building, inside of it. The width of this chamber is exactly 1 28th of the height of the pyramid. What makes this significant is the fact that the cubit was divided into seven palms, which again were divided into four fingers each, making a total of 28 divisions. So since the pyramid is 280 cubits tall, it reflects the philosophy of the cubit. The length of the cubit originally apparently is based on the length of a human forearm. Since it is divided into palms and further into fingers, it's another hint to golden ratio because the proportions of the hand and the forearm pretty much follow this ratio, and again, so do the proportions of fingers compared to the palm. Our decimal system, where we have 10 digits from 0 to 9, to define all numbers, also might have something to do with our hands. The cubit that is defined by the pyramid, converted into the metric system, 
is 52.36 centimeters, fitting within the known variation between 52.35 and 52.92 centimeters. So in meters it is 0 0.5236. There is something very fascinating about this figure. It is exactly one-sixth of the pi. Today there are mainly two units to measure angles, degrees or radians. A full circle is either 360 degrees or pi times 2 radians. 0 0.5236 radians equals 30 degrees, which is 1 12th of a circle. Let's make a note of the location of the Great Pyramid. Its latitude is 29.8 degrees north, so very, very close to 30 degrees. And what about the meter-cubit connection? It seems almost impossible that this number as the definition of the royal cubit is a coincidence. But how can this be? Because the Egyptians didn't know meters. Or did they? Where does the meter come from anyway? You might know that the circumference of Earth is 40,000 kilometers. This round figure is not just a neat coincidence either. It's because the original definition of one meter is that it is one millionth of the distance between the North Pole and the equator. So in order to know the meter, one needs to know this distance. Now, because the pi seems to link the cubit and meter with each other and the height-width relationship of the pyramid is also closely related to pi, it's no surprise to find the following. One third of the 440 cubit width is 146.67 cubits, so basically the same as the height in meters. And now since there seems to be a very precise link between the cubit length in meters and the pi, it would strongly seem that the Egyptians did know the meter and the circumference of our planet. So what are the exact measurements of the Great Pyramid? Researchers generally agree that the pyramid slope angle, which alone is enough to define the shape of the pyramid, is between 51.82 and 51.85 degrees. It is often expressed as 51 degrees and 50 arc minutes, which in decimal form looks like 51.83 degrees. Although there is no way of knowing the exact original proportions of the pyramid, because of the erosion that has slightly shaped it, we can make a pretty good case for 440 cubits wide and 280 cubits tall. Together with the slope angle, these figures just make very much sense. And it's very likely the architects designed the pyramid with a sensible geometrical plan. Also, the actual physical measurements of the pyramid as how it is today, knowing that the limestone outmost layer is no longer there, match this idea. With these values, for the height and width. Their proportions are then 14 to 22. This is an obvious hint to the value of pi, because a generally used good approximation for pi is 22 divided by 7, actually to 99.96% precision.
and 22 uh, divided by 14 is half of that. So the ratio between the height and width is hence pi to 2. And the slope angle now with these measurements is 51.84 degrees. Furthermore, the ratio between the slope length and half of the base width is the golden ratio with equal precision. All this seems to indicate that the pyramid designers intentionally wanted to include the values of pi and phi into its geometry. Now, to get an idea of this level of precision, let's draw a circle and then another circle that has a diameter 99.96% of the previous one. If we change the color of the smaller circle into orange, the thin black line around it shows the difference. If the diameter of the black circle was equal to the width of the pyramid, the orange circle would be 9 centimeters smaller in diameter. And when you think the pyramid is almost a quarter of a kilometer wide, this is a pretty high precision. It would seem reasonable then that the architects chose 14 to 22 as the blueprint for the pyramid proportions. But yet, there is another way of looking at this. You see, when you use the 14 to 22 as the starting point, you will find out that the diagonal triangle of the pyramid has the proportions 9 to 10 in 99.99% accuracy. And actually, in this video, we will build the pyramid based on this 9 to 10 ratio. There is a particular reason to go for that. A traditional mathematical problem is that of squaring the circle. How do you produce a square that has the same perimeter as the circle? If you know the value of pi, this can be easily calculated. But if you don't, a simple way to crack this is to make a square with a diagonal radius of 10 units. Then the radius of a circle, which has the same perimeter as the square, is 9. And this again works in 99.96% accuracy. So now a little bit more detailed information for you mathematically oriented people. The formula to calculate the approximation of pi based on the previous observation is 20 times square root of 2 divided by 9 which gives us the value 3.1427. Another very interesting thing is that when the half diagonal of the square is 10, the full diagonal is then 20, the width of the pyramid side is then 10 times the square root of 2, which incidentally equals to 11 plus pi. The value of pi you get from here is 3.142 and its precision is a whopping 99.98%, so clearly better than 22 divided by 7. The 10 to 9 ratio also gives a very interesting point to the cubit meter relationship. The width of the pyramid in meters is 230.4. If we apply the forementioned ratio to this value, we get the exact number 256, which is 2 
in the power of eight. Anyone who has done any computer programming knows this number. This points out that the pyramid width in meters is definitely not a random number. So it would support the importance of this 9 to 10 ratio if we were to find an Egyptian pyramid that was 90 cubits tall. With a room for the variation of the royal cubit length, this would be between 47 and 48 meters. And indeed, in this range there are a few examples, at least the Yusarkaf pyramid in Saqqara, the Sahura pyramid in Abusir, and Senusret II pyramid in El Lahun. Let's take a look at the most interesting of these ones, the Yusarkaf pyramid, which according to official archaeology is older than the Great Pyramid. It had pretty much the same slope angle as the Great Pyramid, possibly even exactly the same. Its original height is estimated at 49 meters, and it's quite possible that there is an error marginal of a couple of meters here. Perhaps then the Great Pyramid took the geometrical principles of the Yusarkov Pyramid and scales it up to the height of 280 cubits, so 3.11 times more. Although this 3.11 looks like a random number, let's make a note of this figure because we will bump into it again. So now, let's start building this pyramid based on the information we've discussed. We begin by creating this right angle triangle that is exactly 9 units high and 10 units wide. And then use this triangle to define the diagonal slope. Since the half diagonal of the base now is 10, half width of the base is 10 divided by the square root of 2, 7.071. .07 so the actual profile of the pyramid now has the ratio 9 to 14.142. To make this work in integers, we can multiply all the values by 14. Uh, the proportions will then stay the same. The height now becomes 126. The half diagonal 140 and the half width 99. What this means is that we get a 99.99% .99 accurate definition for the square root of 2 and this is 140 divided by 99. Earlier we found this formula for the pi 10 times square root of 2 minus 11. If we now replace square root of 2 in this formula with 140 divided by 99, we come up with 311 divided by 99. This produces the value 3.141414 and so on, which is the pi in again 99.99% .99 .99 precision. So you can see that with these integers that you can find in the pyramid uh, proportions, you get this extremely high definition uh, values for the pi and the square root of 2. And did I say 311? If the height of the Great Pyramid is indeed 3.11 times the height of the Yusarkov pyramid, we might have another confirmation here. And if we now divide all the values by 9, again maintaining the exact proportions, we come up with the values 14 and 11, so 14 and 22 for the whole width. We go full circle back to the original proportions. 
So, whether we build the pyramid based on a 14 to 11 frontal ratio or 9 to 10 diagonal ratio, it doesn't make any practical difference. We are dealing with a 0.01% difference, which in the pyramid scale means 2 centimeters. What is also very interesting is that both the 10 to 9 diagonal ratio and 14 to 11 frontal ratio proportions are encoded in the definition of square root of 2. Regardless of whether we start with the 14 to 11 or 9 to 10 ratio, the same numbers are at play. 7, 9 and 11. When you start the Fibonacci sequence with 1 and 3 instead of 1 and 2, you get the sequence 1, 3, 4, 7, 11, 18 and so on. Although 9 itself is not present in this sequence, 3, which is 9 divided by 3, and 18, 9 times 2, are. Note also that with 9 units as the pyramid height, the diameter of the circle encompassing it, which has the same perimeter as the base, is 18. And the number 29 also belongs to this Fibonacci sequence. So the proportions of the entire pyramid can be easily derived from this alternative Fibonacci sequence. And since these proportions create such accurate values for the important mathematical constants, this particular sequence alone holds the keys for all these findings. Let's make a bit of a leap somewhere totally else, just for fun. In the book of Revelation, the width and length of Holy City, or the New Jerusalem, is measured as 12,000 stadia, which means 1,500 miles. Also, it says for each of the four sides there are three gates. This might mean that the four sides are triangle-shaped, and then this would be a description of a pyramid. We are then told that in human scale each wall is 144 cubits long. The perimeter of the pyramid would hence be 576. It's difficult to say for sure why we have this 1500 miles in angel scale, but 144 cubits in human scale. But if we take this 576 as a multiplier for the miles, we get 864,000 miles. It is generally stated that this is the diameter of the Sun. This would suggest that the holy city described by Saint John has a strong connection to the Sun. We can leave this to speculation, but nevertheless 864 is an interesting figure. The Egyptians seem to like dividing measures with 7. So if we multiply the width of the pyramid by 7, we get 380 cubits, which in meters is 1612.7. This is amazingly close to one mile, which is 1609 meters. Maybe this indicates that the Egyptians knew the mile as well as the meter. But actually, the current information is that the sun's diameter is slightly more than 865,000 miles. But if instead of the current definition of one mile, we use this 1612.7 meters, an Egyptian royal mile if you like, then 
864,000 miles is the diameter of the Sun 99.9% correct. But there is another more straightforward connection to the Sun. The shortest distance between the Earth and the Sun, the perihelion, is 280 billion qubits in 99.7% accuracy, so billion times the height of the pyramid. And to complete this, if you calculate the area of the pyramid base in qubits and multiply this value with 1.5 million, you get the aphelion, which is the max distance between the Sun and the Earth, and again in 99.7% accuracy. One thing that is also often noted is that squaring the circle, which works so beautifully for the pyramid, also points out the relationship between the diameters of the Earth and the Moon. It seems pretty obvious then that the dimensions of the pyramid are intentionally referring to these essential astronomical measurements. And yet, all we needed to do was to start with the 9 to 10 ratio to get the proportions right and then decide to make the pyramid 280 cubits high, reflecting the philosophy of the cubit and make all the rest work. Now that your head is really messed up with all these numbers, let's try to clarify things a bit with a little demonstration. And if you are not yet impressed or confused as it may be, it's time to look more closely at the king's chamber proportion. Now, if we take the absolute size of the pyramid in cubits, the height being 280 cubits, the half diagonal based on the 9 to 10 proportion is 311.11 .11 cubits. This provides an amazing link to the king's chamber. You see, when we slice the pyramid horizontally, 
at an altitude where the width of the pyramid is 311.11 cubits, that altitude is with very high accuracy the altitude where the king's chamber floor is actually positioned. An additional conclusion of this is that the area of the sliced pyramid's base is exactly half of the area of the entire pyramid's base. So obviously the location of the king's chamber is not random at all. And this is the third time we bump into this number 311. The length of the chamber is 20 cubits, its width is 10 and height 11.18 cubits. After what was just said about the Fibonacci series, these numbers 11 and 18 really hit you in the face. The length of the chamber is twice its width. But what is more interesting is the ratio between the width and the height, which is very exactly square root of 5 divided by 2. Since the golden ratio is square root of 5 plus 1 divided by 2, obviously there is a relationship here. And where does that height come from? The answer to that question becomes apparent when we look at the proportions of the chamber as 4 to 2. When you make the diagonal of the gable 3 units long, you come up with that specific height. The most amazing thing here is, however, the fact that now the diagonal drawn inside the chamber between opposite corners is exactly 5 units. Here we now have the 3, 4, 5 right angled triangle, which is where the Pythagorean theorem is derived from. But wait a minute, the pyramid was obviously built a lot before Pythagoras. So who should we actually credit for the special qualities of this triangle. Since the absolute height of the king's chamber is 11.18 cubits, adding exactly 5 cubits to that gives us 16.18 cubits, which is accurately 10 times the golden ratio. Reducing exactly 5 cubits from the height ends up to 6.18, and that is 10 divided by the golden ratio. The proportions of the chamber are far too precise to be accidental. It seems then that both with the proportions of the pyramid, its absolute measurements and the locations of its internal structures, the architects wanted to display the fundamental principles of three-dimensional geometry and mathematics. But why? Was it just meant to be a demonstration of their science for the future generations? Or was it their way of appreciating the geometry of the divine principles a kind of a religious act? Or did they actually find that making a building with these geometrical proportions had some practical meanings? It seems to me that all this links to a whole different sort of mathematics than that which is used today. With this level of understanding of geometry, there was no need to calculate the absolute value of pi or the absolute value of square roots. Uh, you could have a definition that was more than enough for any practical use. Perhaps the Egyptians and maybe the other cultures before them knew this type of mathematics is more naturally connected to the mathematics of the universe and life itself. 
I hope this video has provided you with some useful and interesting information about the architecture and mathematics of the ancient Egyptians. Thanks for watching and if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Cheerio!